thank you, well, you guys, Miles and Ivy, for joining in the call, um, and everybody else for adding in themselves to the breakout room. I'm Layla, as you can see by my name. I am the talent partner here, based in Dubai. What that means, essentially, is that I'm responsible for the hiring needs across the meetup regions for TikTok operations and corporate functions and events. So just a quick agenda for everyone um, around the content of this breakout session. Um, I'm going to first share a little bit of an overview and an insight into our marketing teams here uh, across EMEA, just give you guys a little bit of a general overview in terms of the support that they provide to the business, key skills that we look for within these business areas. I'll also share a little bit of insight into how you can make your application stand out from the crowd. I work in HR, that's sort of my love language, sharing tips like this, and a little bit on what it's like to work for TikTok, right? Obviously, remember everybody, I'm in HR, so my idea of exciting information might not level up to you guys and your expectations. So that being said, I have two pretty cool TikTok employees with me on the call today. Ivy and Miles, you guys can say hi if you like, you both got your cameras on. What I will be getting them to talk about today is really their business areas that they work in, their roles, um, what it's like to work in TikTok. I mean, would you guys like to just do a little quick intro um, before I kick off? Yeah, absolutely. So hi, guys, I'm Ivy. Um, I'm a brand partnerships manager for the UK team in, um, in based in London, and I specifically look after beauty clients here at TikTok. Amazing. Miles, over to you. Great. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Miles. I'm a creative producer here at uh, TikTok Creative Labs. Um, maybe explain more what Creative Lab does a bit later, but i um, excited to chat with everyone. Awesome, awesome. I am announcing a little Q&A on the side, just in case we get any questions um, during our session. We'll get to them eventually, everyone, I promise. I'm going to try and not take up so much time. Um, super excited to speak to you, um, Ivy and Miles, a little bit to understand your journeys and your experience as TikTok as young professionals. But let's first focus on what I better deliver on, which is what you're here for, marketing and more. So. Before kind of getting into too much detail about this, as you all know, TikTok is a trusted entertainment platform piloted by the community, right? And really the goal of the EMEA marketing team is to support TikTok's growth by building these kind of world-class world brand, right? Across all of the regions globally. So the team in essence survive and are here and existing to deliver that scaled, unique and memorable brand campaigns that promote our core mission, right? That spotlights our brand and really drives the associations to our most important content categories. It's important to note here, I would say, that the team is split into two main units, right? We have the regional marketing teams and we have the global marketing teams and they focus on different aspects of the marketing mission. So what I'm going to be focusing on is more on the teams as an overview and the values that they bring to the business, the skills that we look for, because we don't have many headcounts at the moment, but that's going to change as fast as the speed, <laughs> the speed of wind and how fast the wind changes direction or how quickly it rains in London. So we're TikTok, right? We kind of react in that way. So I thought this would be a little bit more interesting. So how do the regional marketing teams work with the business and support? So we have a regional marketing team, right? There's regional marketing leads that are responsible for each country's region. So for example, we've got a marketing lead, I'm focusing on my regions in Africa. We've got one in GCC, South Asia, Turkey, Egypt. What these employees and these talents do is they bring the local know-how and expertise to TikTok, right? It's the whole mantra of act global, think local. They really look at developing and executing marketing strategies on how we're gonna grow our brand and sort of drive that the brand metrics of awareness, consideration, and credibility, obviously using a lot of data, and the kind of skills that we look for for talents that are applying for roles, part of the regional marketing team is really around, you know, how are we adapting global strategies locally, right, to the core of our users in market. So looking at creating local marketing strategies, looking at where are the insights coming from data, 
what are the marketing campaigns that we can execute? You know, what have we done previously? What's relevant based on key occasions coming up? So we really look for talent that have those core marketing skills and experience, a strong understanding of the media landscape, I would say for sure, solid knowledge and awareness of local market trends, culture, and obviously, you know, the content ecosystem in an ethos, right? In terms of our global marketing teams, right? So the global marketing teams are really made up of experts within four key departments. So we've got product marketing, we have marketing and strategy operations, we have social, and then we've got the brand and creative team. So these guys work extremely closely with the business and support our regional marketing teams who are essentially on the ground, right? Into global product marketing. These guys and the teams really exist to build and execute our go-to-market plans for product features, and they really collaborate across all of the functions to essentially test, announce, and launch new products. So a good example of this would be TikTok Live, for example, right? And the newest application that came alive. Um, they really look at how we're establishing and scaling our existing product features with creators and users by partnering up with the regional marketing teams to drive the ongoing kind of adoption and awareness. So the skills here that we look for, for any positions opening up is experience within product marketing, having an understanding of, you know, the kind of global to local plans and strategies and how to create that, you know, cross-function coordination, cross-product alignment across the business, but also, supporting the teams who are regionally on the ground to make sure that they understand what's available, what can be done, right? What can we really do that's that's wow in the market? Similarly, we've got the global marketing and strategy ops team. These guys, again, support the business and the regional marketing team by working across the board, right? They're working with media agency partners in the development, the planning and the coordination and the execution of media strategies, um, for marketing campaigns and any activations. They provide media insights, the regional marketing teams, and really look at how we can elevate the effectiveness of our media campaigns through data to optimize essentially spending and performance, right? So again, within these types of positions that do come up, we're really looking at talents that, you know, understand marketing performance metrics, understand, you know, marketing segmentation, um, what are some kind of marketing growth initiatives that we can work on? You know, how do we look at our marketing strategies and plannings and, and all of these kind of key trigger words? Um, I'm going through a lot of information here. I'm happy, of course, at any stage to answer any questions that come up. Um, I've got a question here. What sort of CV stands out? I'm going to get to that 100%. So give me a minute. So social media. What does social do? What does TikTok do on social media? I think it's probably a more important question to answer first, right? So we use our own social media experts and social leads to leverage the strength and reach of the TikTok platform, right? So we use TikTok to promote TikTok's growth and essentially try to maintain that market share by earning more attention to the brand. So essentially, it's it's the team that defines our entertainment positioning, our tone of voice, and really kind of provides that promise for creativity and diversity of content. So what does this team do to support the business? They support the business um, by working with the regional marketing functions and allowing and providing a voice and a way to communicate with our TikTok community and reach these, these rural communities across sub-Saharan Africa or, in, in smaller areas around the world across EMEA to get these new users, right, engaged, to educate, to kind of really hype up the excitement. So they personalize TikTok to help spread marketing campaign messages, to build trust, to build loyalty on our social media channels. So the skills here that we look for when we're hiring in these teams, when roles come up, is talents that have experience in um, defining the pillars of communication and working on kind of content strategies across social, understanding the landscapes, you know, looking at how can we communicate our brand tone, what's appropriate, um, I would say. And finally, 
um, we've got our global brand and creative team. So they own the brand goals, right? They own the creative strategy and the execution across all markets, all products and channels globally. So this team is quite important. I would say they identify both long-term and short-term growth opportunities through data, through re research and pretty relentless experimentation. They really create, you know, bar raising brand creative programs that's really going to empower the teams locally to be kind of supercharged and reinforce brand vision and business objectives. So they work very strategically with the business and they're quite a big support to us. Um, skills, skills that we look for for talent supplying in these roles, you know, a lot of you know, experience on working with global creative strategies, you know, understanding of what is brand development, how can we create strategies that cater to the regions, um, what are some branding programs, you know, a bit of insight into creative content production, um, team management, team motivation, and the like. So I've given you a very supercharged introduction into, into these teams and what we do. Um, I don't like the sound of my own voice. So I'm going to try and keep this sharp and sweet so I can hand over to Miles and Ivy, who are the stars of the show here, really. Um, in terms of moving on, I want to move on to how you guys can use this information and knowledge to kind of stand out for the crowd when applying for roles. So kind of to answer your question around, you know, what sort of CV stands out in a role for marketing, it's really around, you know, how you're selling yourself, how do you sell your own personal brand, right? So your CV, um, from what I see, I see a lot of candidates that really tailor make their CVs to the jobs they're applying to. So don't just send a generic CV to all jobs, be bold, be creative, you know, but don't exaggerate. So a lot of candidates now within marketing are going a little bit on the creative side, right? They're linking us to a website that they have, they're creating a video on TikTok and they're including that in their JD, they have a blog, which is, you know, engaging them into perhaps one of our content verticals that's showing us a little bit about them, their passion points could be within sports, music, lifestyle, gaming, auto, you know, whatever it is that sings to your love language, include it in, you know, we want to know about you and your experience, not just, um, you know, blank CV, right? We want a little bit about you as well that we can connect with. Um, so yeah, be bold, be creative. You know, we, we're looking to understand who you are, you know, your skills, your accomplishments. Some of the leaders in the business are all for cover letter. It's, it's a great opportunity for you to include extra information, you know, show some grit, show passion. Um, I'm only giving you a small bite size information about, you know, how your CV can stand out because my colleague Roberta Hall is actually running an entire session in another breakout room in 15 minutes. So she will definitely steal the show and give you some really, really great insights into that, you know? I think in a summary to kind of marketing and more before I hand it over to, to Miles and Ivy is, you know, the great thing about TikTok is everybody has an opportunity to have an impact, right? And to influence change as well as drive innovation in your work. You know, it's an opportunity for everybody to really, you know, roll up your sleeves, work and create amazing projects and programs from scratch, you know, you're really empowered as an employee of TikTok to have a large impact um, and to, to support the wider network in a very short amount of time, right? We empower employee employees to have an impact from day one, right? It's one of our bite styles, always day one. So we believe great ideas can come from anyone, no matter how long they've been at our company, you know, what their background is. The fact is that, you know, when you're within TikTok, you have a value right? You, you have a value to bring and it's something that we really, you know, celebrate, right? We celebrate culture, we celebrate character, we celebrate, you know, unique diversity, we celebrate quirky personalities, which is how I've been described in HR, which is quite ironic, um, in our own way. And we try to bring this uniqueness to the company. So in terms of, you know, if you'd like to review our vacancies, I think you can do that on the BYB network, where you can kind of apply interest to sort of TikTok and our marketing roles. Um, you can also look at our careers page. We may not have many openings right now, right this second, but promise, I promise you that will change very rapidly um, as things tend to move at super speed, like a rocket ship we've been known as. So I hope you guys all found this information super useful. 
Um, I'm extremely happy to pass over the mic to Ivy and Miles, who are part of our beautiful TikTok team. Um, they're going to share with us a little bit of information. So, I mean, firstly, how are you guys? I mean, it would be great to find out a little bit about your journeys, your roles, um, your teams. Um, I'll probably be a little bit of an MC to, to kind of keep the conversation flowing, but I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks, Leila. Um, Miles, do you want to go first? <laughs> Oh, I can. Oh, no, I wanted, I wanted, oh, no, it's fine. No, I can go first, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, thanks. Um, that was really in interesting, Leila. I didn't know all of that information. But um, hi, I'm Miles. Uh, I'm a producer for the Creative Lab here. Um, for people that don't know what the Creative Lab is, um, Creative Lab is sort of TikTok's internal ideas, inspiration and production sort of place. And it's our mission as Creative Lab to always help key brands and agencies sort of create best in class work on the platform from video campaigns to some of the best effects to, and just making sure that key clients are really showing off what a great scope of work that can be created on the platform. Um, and just very quickly on my personal experience, I sort of started in um, print media and showing my age, um, um, but I started yeah. editorial work. Um, yeah, as the editor of Fault Magazine, and um, I sort of just slowly switched those um, skills over to the tech side of things here and landed here at TikTok, um, producing TikToks in this brand new industry. But um, yeah, that's, that's me. Very exciting. Thank you for that, Miles. Ivy? Hi, so um, I'm a brand partnerships manager here um, for specifically for the growth team and for beauty. So I started off at TikTok working about beauty and fashion. And then my book of business is now just pretty much completely biz, um, beauty now. And day to day, I work alongside a client solutions manager. So that's somebody who helps me with optimizations with my clients. Um, and then I also work with an account planner who would be someone who would help with media plans and they help me on insights. So we're like a trio working in brand partnerships. Um, but in my, just like how I kind of got to TikTok, uh, my, my background is very similar to the um, Hakeem from the main stage. So I graduated from university. I actually went originally to university to study um, film and television production. I wanted to get into marketing, but down the film distribution side. And then halfway through my degree, I was like, nope, don't want to do this anymore. So I moved on to marketing and event management where I wanted to pursue PR. And then it wasn't until my final year of university after like doing study abroad that um, I actually ended up falling into tech. So my first role um, was in Meta as a partner manager. So working with agencies for a few years and absolutely loved that role. But um, yeah, that was my introduction to tech, which was insane because it's like big, big tech. <laughs> and um, it was a lot for a graduate, I would say, but I learned a lot in that role. And then eventually I knew that I wanted to get into brand partnerships, which I think it's more tailored towards my personality as it's very yeah. much about relationship management. So then I um, moved on to brand partnerships and I was very interested in e-commerce and then eventually my role was tailored towards beauty. So that's kind of my journey here at TikTok. Amazing, amazing. And what is the kind of secret for success, right? Like what, what kind of tips could you share in terms of how you approached your opportunities or even your interview process at TikTok, right? What do you feel that you did that perhaps was different that kind of separated you guys from the crowd? without knowing who the crowd is, right? Because you never know who you're up against in an interview process. But I think that would be really exciting to hear about. Yeah. For me personally, I utilize LinkedIn like my life depended on it. Um, I followed lots of people on LinkedIn. I message people ad hoc on LinkedIn. I'm not scared to slip into someone's DMs on LinkedIn or anywhere else. Um, and so I was just following in general businesses or companies that I would like to go into. And then that's when I found out about open opportunities that were there. Um, I applied for TikTok a few times by myself, but just generally through my contacts and connections and coming to events like this, I ended up getting a referral through um, one of my connections. And that really helped Amazing. me with my interview process because I had someone internally, I guess, to guide me on what was um, key in their role. And so it kind of helped me to reflect on the things that I needed to do to really stand out during the interview process. Amazing. What about you, Miles? 
Yeah, I think for me, because a lot of the work we do in Creative Lab is very visual and I, you know, I had a portfolio from previous work but, and I was very proud of all my previous work. And I think um, uh, because I, you know, I was addicted to TikTok before I worked at TikTok. So it's sort of that trifecta of, A, I actually really love this job so I can speak about it forever in this interview. B, I really love my portfolio and the work there so I can speak about that very confidently. And I think yeah. to see, I'm one of my like ethos on all work is sort of take your job seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Um, so I think that just, you know, that just to me personally, when I sat down with um, my hiring manager for the role, it was just very easy. And I think mm. um, they could tell wow. I loved what I did. So that was helpful. Well, I think, I think that's it, right? Because I think um, my, my personality profile actually probably matches me way way close to the kind of marketing teams and roles here and actually when I came to Dubai I, actually, I quit my job in Scotland because I was like first of all why am I here it's raining second I need a bit, of a, a bit of a change so I actually did an unpaid internship within an agency a global agency for five months in marketing and sort of slipped into HR and recruitment and talent acquisition and I think that was one of the key learnings for me it was just not be afraid to be who you are regardless of the the box that you're put in within the scope of your role right i am still of course serious when i need to be but i think you know when you're representing a brand and you're representing the team that you're within you really have to be yourself and i think tiktok is a great example of a company that does that so i mean in terms of answering the question that we have here from richard when trying to transition from a non-tech background into positions at tiktok what does the hiring team look out for in these kind of applications so i look out for i look out for obviously i'm hr so i look out for relevant skills but really i look out for understanding a little bit about personality and passion and and why the application is here right i think that's what really separates people from the crowd i come from a non-tech background i come from broadcasting and i come from global agencies so i'm i'm in i'm in the industry but but not really right so for me, it was just a case of how can I make myself seen within my CV when there are thousands of HR professionals mm -hmm. that have probably better experience than I do. And that's what I really focused on, you know. Um, what about you guys? What do you think is the best tips from transitioning from a non-tech background into positions at TikTok? I think if, depending on what role you want to get into. So, for example, I can speak from my experience of like, if you wanted to get into my team, so brand partnerships, um, if you don't have digital marketing like experience or anything like that, there are so many courses that you can do that are for free essentially. So there's like the Facebook, or oh, it's not Facebook anymore, so the Meta Blueprint. And um, I think it's like Google AdWords or things like that. You can even get certificates. You don't even have to get the certificates. You can just do the trainings for free. And those things really stand out, I, I personally think, for my team. Um, if you want to be a CSM or a, a BPM, um, it's just really good to have those skills. You don't necessarily have to have had a degree or very specific experience in tech. You know, you're already taking that step to show that this is something that you're engaged in. What do you think, yeah. Miles? Could yeah, definitely. I mean, I previously, you know, like I used to work and still do, you know, in a lot of music industry and print media. And it, it's just about, you know, if I can produce a cover shoot, I can produce a campaign on TikTok. You know, it's, it's the same key skills. And I think that's yeah. the same for a lot of these, you know, visual marketing jobs. And roles um this is all brand new right like and i think it's just it's just about knowing where your skills and how to market the skills you have for the way the new media is working today yeah 100 percent, absolutely and in terms of an interesting question so from from a business point of view from your point of view as tiktokers when do you kind of get that feel good moment of a job well done so what does success look like in the scope of your roles right how do you guys sort of measure success how do you kind of celebrate those wins in the scope of your positions does that keep you motivated to, to keep doing more to keep challenging the status quo what's your kind of take on that that's a pretty big question because i know that there's a lot of ways to measure success but what's what's your kind of view on that I, yeah, I would say, um, so for my role, I'm obviously gold on um, revenue, but that isn't really the only source of success that I see. That's definitely an end goal and it's something that's never going to change. 
But um, what I see as success for me is really onboarding clients that were apprehensive about TikTok onto TikTok and seeing them launch. That's number one. And I think the second one is um, seeing brands or clients um, who have a different vibe on other platforms. So just, I'm just gonna bring out a random cl client, let's say like Clarins. They're very traditional, very like um, focused on a much older audience, very glossy on other platforms. And then they, if they're coming over to TikTok, they might be quite apprehensive about, you know, being fun, being different, being a different version of themselves. And I get like a real kick when they actually launch and you can see that their brand messaging has changed and they've tailored it towards TikToks. And it's just, it's really a heartwarming moment to know like, wow, I've really helped, or TikTok in general has helped them um, change their vibe, like as a business. So those are like real feel good moments for me. Maybe. Yeah, and I guess um, for me, it's just, I think you just know when you're proud of your work, you know, I think even now, you know, we've got three campaigns um, personally in Berlin going on right now, and knowing sort of how much work I'm putting into it, um, compared with um, just, I'm just excited for that end result, seeing it live on the platform and being able to yeah. tell myself it was worth it, it all the work was worth it. Yeah, 100%, 100%. There's an interesting question here. Uh, did we all graduate from university? And if you didn't graduate, how can that be worked around when applying? Um, I'm going to start on that one. I work within HR and everybody needs a degree to, to be able to apply. I actually didn't for most of my career, but what trumps a degree in some instances in some roles is working experience, right? Um, credible working experience, knowledge, knowledge is power, right? Um, I did end up doing my diploma online during the pandemic, thank you pandemic, when I had that little bit of extra time not to go out. Um, but I really think it's it's extremely relevant to the role specifically, right? We cannot hire a lawyer that's not, you know, essentially certified to be a lawyer and understands all of the regulations within the region, similarly to some other positions that are a little bit more, I guess, high in scope. Some positions do need an MBA if it's within product marketing, for example, depending on the level of the role. But I think that can come out and the opportunity for your application to be identified. We don't just go straight to the requirements, right? Does this person have a degree? Tick. Has this person done five years work experience? Tick. It's not how it works within TikTok. It's within TikTok. It's not our hiring philosophy, right? I, I don't know if you guys agree with me from your experience, if you've been a part of interviewing or hired within your teams, but it's really around, you know, where is the experience? What skills does this talent have? You know, it's, it's bigger than just having a degree or not a degree. But what do you guys kind of think about that question? What kind of advice could you give um, to talents who are applying that don't perhaps have a degree and it's listed in the JD? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if it's a creative role, I think you'll definitely have some leeway. Your portfolio is, you know, in many ways more important than the the piece of paper that says you graduated. And um, just, you know, as a reference, we've had um, somebody on our graduate scheme in the creative lab who's not a graduate, but she was able to prove that she's been working very hard. And I think sometimes, well, yes, it is a new barrier. Um, your portfolio can overcome it. Yeah, I definitely think within marketing and sales roles as well, um, as you were the same thing with you, Miles, it's very creative. It's all about selling. It's also about selling yourself as a person, selling the brand of TikTok. So if your CV can sell itself and um, there's people on my team that don't have degrees, um, account planners, there's, yeah, there's people that graduate into brand partnerships roles without ever having a degree. They started off as an account planner and worked their way up. There are so many opportunities without um, having your a degree. I would say the best way is just to sell yourself. Definitely connect with people who already do the roles you want to do and um, see if they can help you on your journey as well. I'd say connection is key as well. Yeah, exactly. And I think that answers another question that we've got, right? Is somebody that is, there's a question from somebody in the other group, Ziba. Hi, Ziba, if you're on the call now. Um, what advice would be give for talents that are working in tech but want to transfer their skills into a more creative role? And I think it's exactly what we were just talking about, right? If there are online courses that you can do for free, do it. Connecting within your network, understanding how this area of the business works, get a mentor, you know, be brave, have those conversations, right? What can I be doing? What, what what's available? I mean, I'm sure you guys get this question a lot more than me. Um, but what advice would you give? I know that we've got two minutes left on the call, but I think this is a really interesting question to ask, right? Because a lot of people are changing their scope, right, eventually. 
Yeah, 100%. Outside of work, I run something called the Tech Sisterhood, which is literally a group of women who work in tech, who are specifically black women who work in tech, mm -hmm. who want to connect with each other to find out if there are opportunities in different companies or their own companies. So, you know, join, there's hundreds of situations like this. So if you can join some sort of network as well, where people can share their learnings about how they transition throughout their tech roles, um, I think that would be super beneficial. Amazing. Yeah, I'm definitely. Sure. And I think that, you know, you've already passed the first hurdle. You work in tech. <laughs> the best yeah. to talk to your fellow <laughs> colleagues and they can help you. And I mean, they they should see the initiative in you and hopefully be a helping hand. I mean, thank you so much, guys, for, for joining today. I mean, any last kind of takeaways for, for talents that are interested in TikTok and future opportunities? You know, what what motivating statements can you share, right? What is the secret to success i can the one thing that motivated me is that i didn't really give up like i knew i wanted to work at tiktok regardless of the fact i worked at meta i was like for sure certain i had to work at tiktok i applied multiple times <laughs> for roles and for different roles and i kept looking into different things until i landed in the right place and got the opportunity so i'd say really don't give up um if one role maybe you don't get keep trying for another one, really research what you can. And as I said, I'll keep saying connections, using LinkedIn it is your best friend. So definitely don't give up if you want that role in tech. And if you want that role at TikTok, keep going for it. Yeah, I mean, look, from where I'm sitting, I had a candidate that I connected with across six positions on six different teams. And it wasn't a case of they weren't they weren't qualified to be considered for the role. It's just, it's the whole ethos of, if it's not this position, there will be another role, right? It's a case yeah. of finding that position and staying staying dedicated to the process, right? Communicating, having those conversations with whomever you're speaking to in the business and the, that magic position will come up, right? At some yeah. point, definitely. What do you think, Miles? Definitely. And, I, you know, I think it is so easy to get unmotivated in this time. Mm -hmm. And you always tell yourself to keep pushing, keep pushing, but... It, it sounds like awful advice, but do just keep pushing. It's worth <laughs> it. And um, it will come when it's meant to come. So as long as you keep working outside of, you know, do your side projects yeah. as well to keep yourself motivated. But yeah, do. 100%. Um, couple more questions. Ivy, could you repeat the name of the Women in Tech Network, please, so that we can just of make course. sure everyone knows? <laughs> It's called the Tech Sisterhood. You can find us on Instagram, um, yeah, <laughs> or Slack, actually. So the Tech Sisterhood on Instagram and Slack. Amazing. Hopefully, everybody here can get involved in that. Sounds really awesome. Um, OK, how is it possible to get hired for a role outside your region, country, or continent, living young in the most jobs available in the continent? Not country, it's possible to get hired in the UK. Absolutely. We're a global company. Um, if there is an opportunity that is based in the UK and you're based overseas, you know, apply for it, add that into your cover letter. Why are you motivated to be in this country? Why is, what is it about this position and your skills and your attributes? You know, we're a global company, we're TikTok, right? We're not just restricting people based on where they are. We want to get the best talents wherever they are in the world for whatever region it is that they're going to be working on. Um, I think the key here is that, you know, if there's specific regional knowledge and or hands-on experience that you need to have, um, using legal as the most obvious example, then that may be the, the kind of the catch-22 for you in applying for that position. But, you know, reach for the stars, right? If there's an opportunity that you want to chase after, chase after it, stay motivated, um, like Miles and, and Ivy said. I mean, we have run over time by two minutes. Um, thank you so much for joining, guys. Thank you, everybody who decided to join us today. Um, hopefully the rest of the sessions on how to create your CV with my colleague Bert will be really useful for you. I'm going to attend the networking session if anyone has any questions for me. Um, you know, please don't be a stranger. I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, thank you again, Miles and Ivy. It was such a pleasure to speak with you guys, right? Get introduced, even though we're at TikTok. So we should probably get yeah. on Mark and, and have a coffee. Get yeah. on Mark and, and have a coffee after this. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Leila.